Hi, Jenna. You're very welcome to the show. Before we kind of get started with the questions, I, I just want to kind of share a quote that was on your profile that I found really, really useful. And it says, success is no accident. It's hard work, perseverance, learning, studying, and most of all, love of what you're doing. That's so true. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to exploring some of those teams as we go through the, the, the questions today. So again, thank you very much for, for sharing your time with us. Yeah, my pleasure. Like you've got expe- sorry, extensive, I'm going to say expensive experience. You've got extensive experience <laughs> in creating and leading professional service teams. Like what key strategies have you found most effective, particularly when you're trying to drive, for example, you know, better quality delivery, married with improving productivity, where there's always that bit of tension, you know, in the customer service sector or space. How have you managed that? Yeah, I mean, honestly, it comes down to data, right? That's where it begins. So having access to and tracking data is so critical to be target and 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 really gauge the efficacy of your team right so you know it's it's a wonderful thing i part of amplitude right where we have it's for an analytics company so having access to data about again on the services side for example our time to value our efficacy to drive outcomes for customers the ability to have that data both um the hard data as well as the more qualitative feedback from CSAT surveys um, is so critical, right? And we, you, you know, I use that information not only from an operation side to check the efficacy of the team, but also thinking about areas of improvement, right? How can we further improve driving quicker value for our customers? What are more effective means for us to do that and to be more targeted to try to solve for that? So to me, it really comes down to that that piece is it's so critical to have access to both um, qualitative and quantitative data to be focused focused on the things that matter for the, for the customers and also for the organization. I love that, like the whole concept of being, and I think it's more than just being data driven, it's being insights driven, as you yes. you're describing, where like you're really mining that data and understanding it. And I, again, I love the fact that you're talking about not just driving kind of operational productivity, but also looking at how do you drive improvements from the customer perspective. So I really love that kind of, you know, data or insights driven approach very much resonates. Yeah. You mentioned passion for defining processes and tracking KPIs. Can you share some insights on how these have impacted customer success at Amplitude and what specific KPIs you prioritize to ensure customer experience or customer satisfaction? It first of all comes down to like the, the critical like run the business metrics, right? So, you know, uh, at Amplitude, for example, we have our our implementation, right? And, and that first critical point of the, the life cycle is so important. So we track things like customer experience, you know, the time to value is super important. And also other super important leading indicators that give us a sense as to whether or not we're going to be on track for more of our like larger business outcomes like renewal rates. So those are the things that we track at the weekly basis. It's like super important. To, to do. And then something, again, that holding my, my team also to accountable that, to that as well. But really, on top of just the day-to-day metrics, the other thing that's important is how you want to progress your organization. So I very much like have always applied to more of like an, an OKR type of a model, right? Because I found that especially in like a SaaS services and customer success organization, everyone wants to contribute and so problem solving driven, but sometimes we just do activities, right? And and the, some of the activities may not lead to outcomes. So having, you know, a framework of an OKR, really smart goals that you're in initiatives, right, that are outcome driven, you know, defined by, by set KPIs or metrics of success, with clear timelines and and putting that to more of like your strategic initiatives that you can really be focused on improving the business. So both of those things I found to be so critical to not only make sure that you're running a a successful business now, but also thinking about continually improving your organization, you know, going forward and and keeping the team focused because time matters and, and focus matters, especially right now. Absolutely. I love that whole concept of really granular in, in an OKR framework. I think it really gets people, you know, uh, motivated and driven to to really understand how they're delivering value, how they're kind of contributing to the business. I think, it, yeah, as you already point out, everyone wants to contribute and wants to be recognized for that and get an attribution for it. So, you know, I think an OKR framework is really important to achieve that. 
Yeah. And, and again, I, I think that I, the way I find also is again, like from a service, I'll put on my, my PS hat where, you know, you're focused on utilization and billable utilization. So the time that you do spend on some of those more extracurricular or practice development is so critical. You also need to make sure that you're deploying those resources on, on strategies or initiatives that are truly strategic in, in, in nature, right? And the ones that are really going to move the business forward. And so again, it all just to me comes down to focus being folks on what matters, which is driving outcomes for the business and, and for our customers. I like you've touched us a couple of times, like really driving value for your customers. Like that's kind of the, one of the key outcomes that you, you know, any business needs to achieve, but sometimes it can be difficult to have the right focus on it. So I love that approach. In your role as VP of Global Customer Success, how do you approach the challenge of developing and implementing operational models that not only meet the current needs, but more importantly, are scalable and adaptable for future growth or future business change? Yeah, it's hard. I mean, it's like, and again, I, I think I fell into this like a, 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 like, you know, not too long ago is you get stuck on the current problems and it's hard to spend time you know, it's a bit of slowing down to speed up. And so it's it's really important you take that time, whether it be quarterly or, or annually, thinking really where you want to be going in 18 months or so, right? And then creating, you know, that vision of where you want to go is like so important. And again, you it's so important to talk to your talk to your peers, talk talk cross functionally to get a sense of where they believe they're going to be going, not only in your company, but also within the industry is so important when setting that vision statement. And then what I found, again, I, I very much deploy the concept of, you know, walk or crawl, walk, run, right? So what are those incremental changes and, and milestones that that have to be made across that journey to help to achieve that vision? You know, it's, it's, it's so important. The thing I will say, though, is even with all of those things deployed, you know, it, it's it's what I found. And again, I, I've fallen into this myself and, and seen other teams is you can also get stuck by perfection of a plan, right? Or perfection of defining the metrics or, you know, be worried about not hitting, you know, your targets. I, I found that it is so important to, to, to get something out and start to execute and just learn from it. And, and sometimes the, like the, the, the times when you fail are actually the ones where you learn the most. And it's what you do with that, right? And how you continually improve again when it comes down to how you're delivering for customers and how you're creating processes that drive productivity that you constantly have to iterate, iterate to your plan and, and iterate to processes. I, I love that, that whole concept of a minimal viable product, get it out there, iterate and improve on, learn all the time. Like That's really fundamental. And one thing that I've used in terms of scaling is the concept of 10x, right? So if you're thinking about, you know, designing something, don't design for what you think the parameters are today. Think about, well, what if it was 10x, what I'm trying to do today? What different decisions would I make? Can I incorporate those into the plan now and kind of get ahead of, you know, what's going to happen when I need to scale? And it's amazing when you get to be able to think with that 10x mindset, they come up with much better solutions in terms of what you need right here, right now, quite apart from the fact that it then helps you bridge to a bigger world down the line. Absolutely. And I think it's our job as leaders to help actually bridge that gap, right? Because I think that sometimes the people or the managers on the ground have the best sense, again, of what customers or, or opportunities are out there. But helping them, number one, understand the potential, right, is, is so important. And then number two is how do you get there? What are the, the steps that you have to follow, the, the systems, the tooling that you have to deploy to do that is, again, I just, I think is our, our job as leaders to help help our organization get there. Absolutely. Yeah. Sometimes I say it's trying to solve for the problem down the line and the problem today can actually open up more creativity, innovation, and you know, people begin to look at things differently. We're in a world where it, everything is becoming AI driven and particularly customer service, customer success, customer support. It's all about AI, AI driven. How do you believe the mindset and strategy of customer service teams need to evolve in this world beyond just adopting kind of AI point tool solutions? What's, what for you is the core value proposition for AI in this world? Yeah, I mean, so number one, like I've just found AI to be so, so key now like to productivity, right? Like I see what you can do from like meeting notes and all of that. So number one is just taking advantage of those like tooling. But I even think about the experience that I have right now with AI. So for example, like last weekend, I was doing research on, you know, chat GBT on a travel itinerary, you know, and what would have probably taken me days and days and days to figure out an itinerary and check different sites and different blogs. I got in like 15 minutes, 10 minutes. But what I will still do, though, is I'm still going to ask my friends people that have gone and traveled to, again, Croatia, for example, to get their perspective because they know me, 
They know that I have a, a family with, with kids. They know what I like. And I think that that same strategy is going to be similar to customer success, right? Is our customers are going to be used to going to AI to get questions answered, right? And again, it's just as we have to be able to have solutions that actually work for what customers want right now, which is immediate answers. And so what we have to do within customer success is up our game. You know, when you come to a customer engagement, you have to add value add, right? And it's doing the proper research, right? So, you know, at Amplitude, for example, it's always use the amazing, great AI capabilities to understand customers' business models, right? Go and look at their annual reports. Go and look at a bunch of you know industry information, as well as use data. I mean, we have also access to data about engagement data and how they're using their product. And when you go into those customer meetings, you have to be consultative. You have to provide that personalized experience that you really know them you really know their customers and their users. And, and again, it, it has to just be consultative. So I think that's more and more of where customer success is going to go from a human lens. And then we have to solve also for how customers are going to engage with us in non-human based ways, whether it be digital or whether it also be with AI. I love that you use the word consultative because I've used it in the context of customer support. Like I believe the customer support role is going to become more consultative with customers. You're solving all the easy problems. It's the complex issues that need a lot more engagement, a lot more interaction are, are going to be left. And I had a really good example in, in a customer success world where AI is being used to kind of analyze customer trends and basically present to the customer success team, here's kind of the top 10, 15 opportunities that you should probably go after. So it's kind of giving direction and giving kind of a, you know, a lens that to set managers are going to look at and really decide what are the things they're going to do for their customers, where they bring that empathy, that knowledge, you know, they're getting access to the data that really means they're, they're adding value. And the way we talk about it here is like it's AI and human support working together or it's AI and, you know, success management working together. And I think sometimes the industry is losing sight of that. It's almost like AI for AI's sake, whereas no, like it, AI can help you with a business problem or a business challenge, but it's complementing the human experience that, that ultimately, you know, un, underpins a, a lot of what we do from a customer service point of view, whether that's success or support, et cetera. I love those insights, Jenna, really good. Well, and I actually think support is one of the really interesting areas of where we're going to see more of the immediate impacts of, of AI, right? Because there's so many things you can do from productivity and where it's, you know, rinse and not more rinse, repeat answers. So again, I, I think that's the one sector that I'm finding super interesting to see where, how teams are evolving with AI. Absolutely. Like we've seen the first hand here, like uh, we're using our own kind of same chatbot technology. And today we're kind of answering roughly about 40% of customer queries using Finn. And the team love it because we're taking out all of the mundane routine work that they get pretty tired of very quickly. And they're now able to focus on a lot more complex work for our customers. They feel they're adding more value. Customers feel they're getting more value out of the human support engagement as well. So it's kind of it's actually a real win-win situation, which I, I wish that message was out there broader in the industry like that. You know, AI is not about replacing humans. AI is about complementing humans and actually delivering a much better experience at the end of the day for customers and for people who are involved in, you know, support or success or whatever the, the activity is. So it's definitely an interesting world we're kind of moving into very quickly, but lots, lots of opportunity there. Absolutely. And again, it brings on to the next question, like as, as AI transforms the landscape of customer service, what new and exciting roles do you see emerging for customer service teams? And how is Amplitude preparing its teams for these changes? Yeah, I mean, I think the first one, right, is what you're starting to see is like you need to have good data documented to provide a, a, a quality AI experience. So I think there also just needs to be a really strong investment, right, in technical writers continuing to keep your documentation, you know, really on point and up to date, especially as you release new feature and functionality. And again, the documentation also in the best practices, that's going to be super important. And then I also think of kind of what you talked about already, like from a customer experience. So at, at Amplitude, for example, we're investing a lot right now in, you know, defining and enhancing our, our, our customer journey. And then we're really thinking through, okay, well, how do their customers engage their product, but also engage with humans and also engage in digitally? Well, when you add AI to, into it, you also really need to be intentional about it, right? So when is the point that a customer is going to go and get a digital outreach? When should they intervene with AI? When should they intervene with humans? Like, I really do think that there's going to need to be more investment about thinking really thoughtfully about how you want customers engaged with all of these different means of 
means of engaging with with our with our product and with our with with AI and with humans. That to me is going to be a very interesting role within like the customer success space. Yeah, I think you've hit three really key things in, in you know that answer. Like one is around content and knowledge. Like you know, I, I think people don't appreciate that an AI solution is only as good as the knowledge you have access to. And in the business world, that means it's your business specific knowledge that it needs access to. So you're not leveraging the knowledge of the large language model. You're actually leveraging the knowledge of your business that you've got to feed into the your AI subsystem. And and like you know, the amount of effort that's involved that I think sometimes is under underestimated. Like people talk about the investment in the AI tool, but what about the investment in the content and the knowledge and the documentation? Like that's probably just as critical as the you know, making a technology decision. So I think that that that, that was really key. The other one that I loved as well was, you know, the whole concept of, you know, customer mapping and really understanding how customers are interacting. You know, and again, there's a whole focus emerging around customer journey analytics as well. So really understanding what are the analytics around all those touch points, what value are you adding, how can you measure the the impact, etc. Again, it's fascinating, as you say, when you feed AI into the mix. And in our case, like we have an AI chatbot that fronts a lot of our conversations, it hands over to an automation layer that hands over to human support. And you really, as you say, you got to be intentional around that journey. Like, what does that feel like from a customer perspective? So, you know, when we talk about new roles there, like I've hired in what's called a conversation designer. And they're looking at like, what does it actually feel like from a customer perspective when they're going through that flow, which is new. Like before you, you know, you, you got into a queue, you talked to a human, the question was answered. Now it's, it's a much different journey. And being intentional about that and designing it in, in, in a kind of a way where you're looking at it from, totally from the customer perspective, it's actually a new skill set. And I think that's part of the exciting thing about this AI world. There are lots of new jobs and new roles emerging that people maybe don't fully appreciate, but it, it's adding a lot more value for careers for people as well. Like I know a lot of people now are kind of seeing different career opportunities for them within support or success that they didn't see before. And a lot of it's being enabled by AI and, and the roles that they're undertaking are more valuable as well. So it's kind of one of those win-win situations. The other thing is that I, I find interesting right now is again, like, we a lot of the customers of Amplitude have digital products, right? That's the entire value out of, of Amplitude is doing analytics on on products. And so and a lot of our customers have a heavy strategic investment in AI. So the other thing that's important that we're seeing, not only like at, at Amplitude and the investments that we're making in AI and like new roles, but we're also seeing it across our customers and access to data is is extremely important. And again, they're using tools like Amplitude um, where you need to have access to the data to test the efficacy of these AI features, right? Testing the efficacy of, again, how they fit into the customer journey. So the role that we didn't necessarily talk about, but I also see is number one, you need the right tools to, to do this because data is going to be critical as you as you really gauge the efficacy of the, of the solutions. And then number two is you need the people, like you need the analysts that are going to be able to test the efficacy and, and provide, you know, that, that feedback back in terms of enhancements of, of, of AI in future. So that's the other role that I think there's going to be a continued heavy investment in as, as AI gets more and more prevalent. Absolutely. In fact, I spent most of this morning actually meeting a number of our teams looking at how do we actually determine whether we've delivered a good customer experience or not in this kind of AI world? Where are the points we have to measure? What are the new things we need to factor into kind of a customer health score in this world? So fascinating, like it, it's an evolving space. You know, best practices still got to be established, which is great. You know, it's an opportunity to really influence what's happening in, in this world. Which kind of leads me on to kind of the final question, like what is the future of customer service in you know, technology, healthcare sectors where you have a lot of experience and how should companies prepare to meet these evolving demands and expectations? Because I think there's still a lot of apprehension, misunderstanding, you know, uh, around, you know, the trends, particularly driven by AI. I think that... The- one of the key things is like, how do you do more with less, right? I think that's more of the immediate thing about how can you use AI to drive productivity? I mean, that's that's one of the key things that we're doing right now is like asking every single vendor that we have right now about their AI capabilities to see where we can be doing using AI capabilities to drive more efficiencies within our organizations. And again, similar to what I said of how can you use our systems to, again, help my CSMs, you know, is 15, 30 minutes of taking notes from um, and writing agenda notes they can do through AI capabilities. Um, that's just, again, like one example. But I think the other thing that we just have to be super mindful of is it has to be intentional, right? So not AI for the sake of AI is have to be intentional about how it fits into 
the customer journey, right? And and the other thing that we have to be intentional for, especially, you know, as you deal potentially with customers in, you know, protected market or protected spaces, like you think about healthcare, I think about finances, you also have to think about how how you how AI engages also and you do it in an ethical way and in a way that protects state, in a way that protects privacy. So those are the things that we also just need to continue to be intentional about how we think about the the role of, the, of AI and be really intentional about how it plays in different sectors and, and customers that we support. Like I said, just like healthcare is a, is a prime example. Absolutely. I, I love the concept of being intentional about AI because I think there's a lot of people, uh, you know, you use the term AI for AI's sake. It's, it, that's not what it's about. It's got to be very intentional. And the other thing is that I think organizations maybe misunderstand, like it's not just another technology be- per se because the way you implement it it's actually a big change management challenge as well. You know, it impacts teams, it impacts the way they work, you know, and you can engage your teams in the right way at the right time that it's actually a very positive experience for everyone. And they're actually contributing to your overall strategy around how you're using AI. Because the point I make to people, no one understands our customers better than the support team that deal with them day in, day out. And they can tell you, you know, quicker than anyone else whether an approach you're going to adopt around maybe implementing a chat bot and how it interfaces with a customer. They'll let you know pretty quickly whether it's going to work or not. So that kind of engagement with your team, define the strategy, let them know why we, why you're doing it. You know, talk about the opportunities because there's lots of opportunities for roles to evolve or new roles to emerge. And all of a sudden, it's 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 a totally different motivation, momentum then. And people are, you know, uh, I think to a point you made earlier, like very aligned, know the vision, they're bought in. And it's it's a you know it, it's a really really exciting space, and one encouragement I have for anyone like take a step forward like you know the lots of what you do in the AI space it's not kind of a one way door like you can turn it on and off. Like, I have an example: one of our customers tried our chatbot, it didn't work very well when they deployed it, right? And all of a sudden they realized why you know to a point earlier they hadn't really looked at their content and knowledge, they hadn't checked was it good enough for an AI chatbot to actually interpret and use. Turn chatbot off for two weeks, redid their content, turn it back on, and all of a sudden they were getting 35, 40% resolution rate of, you know, a lot of their issues and questions. So, you know, there's a, lo- a lost opportunity if people aren't thinking about how they can deploy it. But I think that the key point you made, be intentional, know what the problem is you're, you're trying to solve, what your vision is about it. And also think about that, that ethical side of things as well. Yeah, and I also think that the point we just talked about beforehand was, it's also, it's such a new space that you have to trial, right? And you have to figure out like what is effective and you have to be iterative and you have to, again, like be be super aligned about, you know, the fact if it's not making an outcome, then turn it off as you've said or or iterate on it. So it's just, again, like I just think it's so important for us to be, be focused in the mindset of being curious, taking some risk. Iteration is going to be so important as we learn how AI comes to life in, in customer service space. Absolutely. Jenna, it's been a real pleasure talking to you today. I love the insights you provided about what you're doing at Amplitude and how you're looking at the way technology is advancing. And I love the fact that you've talked consistently about that technology working with humans and complementing each other. I think it's a, it's, a, it's a real message that needs to get out there into the industry. It's not AI for AI's sake. It's not just another technology implementation. Like This is a, you know, a real opportunity to transform how you deliver success or support to your customers. Absolutely. Well, great speaking to you as well.